You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BB- this is the... You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 Radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at bbmglobalnetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is the Mind Health Coach with your host, Leah Marie. Change your mind, change your life. Your life is your choice, and you don't have to walk that path alone. Let Leah help you explore healing, inner peace, self love, and bring joy and wellness into your life. So now, please welcome the host of the Mind Health Coach, Leah Marie. Welcome to the Mind Health Coach Program. I'm Leah Marie, your host, and you're listening to a live broadcast here at the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. The Mind Health Coach Program is aired every Monday night from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to tune into this show on Mondays at 6 p.m. if you want to improve your life. To learn more about me and the programs that I offer, visit mindhealthcoach.com. And you can also learn more about my eight weeks to a better brain using Moody Daily Meditation Program at Mooditations.com. And I am also doing a few exciting things coming up in the next few months. Um, We have uh, a cruise set in September. We're going to Bermuda. It sails out of New New Jersey. And this cruise is focused on caregivers and their loved ones that are dealing with dementia or other forms of um, Alzheimer's specifically, but other forms of dementia. So if you know someone that is a very stressed out family member that is um, experiencing a loved one that has some form of dementia. This is a great experience to let them know about. And they can check the information out on my website, uh, the Mind Health Coach Program. I mean, excuse me, www.mindhealthcoach.com. And there's a whole page dedicated to this Bermuda cruise. And so we'll be in Bermuda for several days that um, that is part of this whole trip. There's going to be a couple days at sea. During the days at sea, we're going to be conducting some workshops. I'll be actually conducting about four different workshops that will be focused around caregiver self-care um, and the stress that uh, that comes up because of caregiving and also how to be dealing with the transition um, that you're experiencing as a person with Alzheimer's. That will be addressed and how to manage your fears and, and how to overcome those feelings that you're having with different techniques that are very relaxing. And they're very easy, too. And all of it can be done, um, you know, with a little bit of of training. You can actually have the caregiver, family member helping you guide you through this process in a lot more um, stress relief way. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on in my workshops. And then um, there'll be some other presenters on board that will be teaching different things. But one of the other aspects that I find to be extremely helpful to these families that would consider coming on board is that there will be respite care services on board for those that want to go do a couple things on their own, maybe go for a massage and that sort of thing, some self-care on board. There is spa services on board. Um, So they would be able to have our respite care staff that are dementia care experts help them out with being able to achieve that. So it's really a wonderful uh, experience for those that are experiencing not a lot of support um, in this process of caring for somebody with dementia. And I'm really honored to be part of this cruise. Um, And then there's some other things that are going on, but I have 
uh, a plan for doing some different meditation groups soon. And uh, some of them will be focused on joining into a different thought process of healthier lifestyle living. It's going to be focused on reprogramming, rewiring your neural network um, to improve the way that you are eating, the way that you view food, the way that you view exercise. And it's something I've been working on myself because I, um, have gained some a little bit of weight in the last couple of years. I had a surgery and then I was also sick last year and it kind of made me a little bit uh, less active. So I'm really, you know, been working on this different process of a whole total lifestyle makeover. And I want to share the, the methods that I'm working towards reprogramming the way I'm my relationship with food is and exercise and my self care. And, you know, a lot of times, I'm a I'm a single mom have been taking care of my children for uh, many years by myself and I'm always giving and then I'm also in the elder care field where we are caregivers to all these different families and it's really a beautiful wonderful experience but we forget sometimes that we're also in need of that self-care. So I've been studying and really working towards a certification from the Chopra Center, which is a, a totally um, a total lifestyle of working towards maintaining perfect health, getting in perfect health. And uh, it's it's using ancient techniques from Ayurveda. And it's, it's all in alignment with the things I've already been teaching, such as meditation and pranayama breathing. And it just is adding in a whole nother layer that I haven't really explored before taking this training and it's more to do with the foods and the way that you should um, be looking at them, especially from your own body type, your own personal, what they call dosha. So we're going to be exploring that in my, my workshops that I'm going to be doing. They're going to be on Saturdays and they're going to be starting in about a month. So if you're interested in signing up for that, I suggest that you send me an email info at mindhealthcoach.com or, um, you know, you can just visit the website, mindhealthcoach.com and um, fill out the contact page and just state in there that you're interested in signing up for that that uh, workshop, which is going to be probably eight weeks. It's going to be eight different segments and they're going to be about an hour um, on Saturdays in the AM time. So I'm looking forward to, to starting that soon and uh, getting things off the ground there. And uh, you can also just call as well. The Mind Health Coach number is 508-938-9211. That's 508-938-9211. And of course, I'm in the United States. So if you're in another country, it might be best for you to just email or fill out the contact page. I'll state that email one more time, info at mindhealthcoach.com. And mindhealthcoach.com is the website. It has a lot of great information there. There's some blogs there. Um, there's also some videos there about different aspects of the things I work on. And this whole Bermuda trip is listed there. So there's a lot to look at. Um, actually getting my re website rebuilt. So keep in, uh, keep in the loop about that. So we'll be introducing that shortly as well. But I'm looking forward to these new uh, workshops that I'm creating and uh, hoping that I'll, you know, be able to help a lot of people out there that are struggling with their weight. And the work that I'm doing will be, um, I'm not saying that it's going to happen extremely fast or like this magical overnight pill that you're taking, you're going to drop all these pounds, but it will help you start to view things a little differently. When we do some work on the meditation for weight loss, it's going to help you, it's going to provide you with the, the wiring that you need to help you be successful in the weight loss program that we're looking at. So I'm excited about it and I feel it, it's very healthy. It's a healthy way to um, work towards your goals. So looking forward to that. And we are going to take a quick break and we'll be back in just a moment with more from the Mind Health Coach Program. 
If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. If you're a person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Kohler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. We're back, and I'm Leah Marie, your host for this hour on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with the Mind Health Coach Program. So before we went to break, I was talking about the um, upcoming program that I'm going to be doing regarding your relationship with food and exercise and just your lifestyle. And, you know, I... I really am impressed with the recent training that I've been doing through the Chopra Center, and I'm really excited to start sharing that once I'm totally completed with the program. Um, I'm going to be going out to California in May and, uh, you know, do some more work uh, hands-on, so that's going to be really great. But I did want to get started with some different things that I can share beforehand, and, uh, you know, I'm interested in developing a group that would meet on Saturdays that would be sharing um, with me their experiences and doing some coaching and training on different stress management techniques because a lot of our relationship with our exterior is really about emotions and how we are processing emotions. And so when we're holding on to negativity and stress and viewing things from a perspective of Um, that it's really a negative, then we tend to turn towards different things such as food or um, some people can actually uh, not want food if they're extremely stressed and, and that's not exactly healthy either. I've been there before in the past. And then some people can be in a space where they're over exercising or feeling so down that they don't feel like exercising. So it's important that you have a lot of tools to help yourself get through those different periods of time where you are feeling this negativity. And I think um, supporting each other and working together and learning these different tools is um, a great foundation to start shifting your perspective and being led to a place where you're able to choose healthier um, ways to express your, your emotions meaning that you're metabolizing all that is happening in your life in a positive way, no matter what comes at you and that you're digesting it and metabolizing it. And then, um, using that as fuel to, to do positive things for yourself instead of, you know, it can almost be self-destructive when you're, um, turning to different things like high fat carbs and uh, foods that don't provide good nutrition and you're going to the fast food joints and you're, you're drinking down, you know, high sugared uh, drinks that aren't going to help you either. Um, I was reading something the other day where I understood that 
the drinks that we are are consuming in today's day and age, not everybody, but a lot of people are consuming a lot of like beverages that are very harmful more than just to your teeth. They're harmful to your weight and your overall health. And they're actually, I think it was a number of like 30, a percentage of 30% of our diet that is fat intake is coming from beverages. So things to look out for, like, you know, a high fructose syrup in any product is unhealthy and it's not even made to really be uh, metabolized by our DNA. So it's, it's very confusing. So if you can, you know, I'm not going to give too much nutritional advice in these classes, but if you can look to different products that are more natural and um, healthy al- alternatives like stevia, I've been incorporating stevia um, that's organic in to things that I want to taste a little sweetness in like iced tea or, or coffee, that sort of thing. Um, stevia is really great and you can get it in our organic form. So that's really magnificent, but it goes deeper than that. And it's, as I said, it's more about how are you processing your reality? How are you taking in the external circumstances that are happening in your life, no matter what it is from job to career, um, your aspirations for career to, uh, you know, what's going on in your family surroundings, what's going on with your, if you have aging parents, if you, are having um, adult children that are in in need of help, Um, if you are in a position where you are a student and and you're stressed because you're not sure of what your career is going to be like in the future and what your bills will be like, or if you're, you're, uh, you know, just starting out um, in a marriage that you're unsure of how you're going to get a house and uh, pay off all your college bills. There's a lot of reasons why we are very stressed out about our lifestyles. And, you know, the more people that want to join in, in the practices that I'll be teaching on these Saturday morning classes, um, I might even be able to identify certain circumstances where I can group people together and have individualized groups that are more um, geared towards the specific needs of, of that demographic, so to speak. So I'm really excited to see who, who, uh, shows up and, um, wants to be, uh, part of this, this forum. And so, as I stated before we went to break, the best way to, um, get in contact with me about this particular coursework that we're going to be doing. It's going to be an eight week course on Saturday mornings. Um, either email me at info at mindhealthcoach.com call. You can call at 508-938-9211, or you can go to the website, mindhealthcoach.com and you can fill out on the contact page, what your, what your interest is. And that'll put you on our email list too. Um, another thing that I'd like to talk about is, uh, you know, April is stress awareness month and it's international stress awareness month. So how are you dealing with your stress this month? Are you aware of what's giving you a lot of stress and what are you doing to, um, make changes to feel better and, and to promote healthier living in, in, what you're doing because it's so critical that you're maintaining and managing the stress. Otherwise things like weight gain can happen or, you know, different diseases can start to progress. Um, Autoimmune disorders can come into play. Diabetes is really a big issue for people in America and it's related to a lot of the way we eat, but it's also related to our relationship with, um, you know, what's going on in our circumstances and how are we processing it? And that's a big part of the teachings that I've been going through um, in the Chopra Center is how are we processing everything that comes into our lives? And so it's important that you have mechanisms when things are out of balance on how to come back into balance. But there's also some different things that you can do with meditation practices that can make you better prepared for anything at any time. And so meditation is really helpful in implanting, planting the seed in your brain of, of what, 
what's your going to be your reaction? How are you going to react and how are you going to process things and how are you going to continue to handle things? We are going to take another quick break. And when we come back, we'll be talking more about stress management and uh, the classes that'll be coming up. Be right back. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20 year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Welcome back to the Mind Health Coach program with Leah Marie on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Before we went to break, I was talking about how there are different methods to um, making sure that you're programming your brain to handle any situation. It's like hard sometimes when you're going through the day and you're hit with something that is unexpected and, you know, it can really throw you off track and it can make you feel like, you know, the, everything's messed up and you're out of balance. And then you, you reach for things that you didn't want to reach for, like the bag of candy or, um, my favorite go-to has always been chocolate. And I've recently learned that (laughs) 70% cocaia is, is really good. The dark chocolate is really, really good for your health and you can have a small quantity of that every day. So if you have some of that on hand, it might be, you know, not a bad thing. It's good for your heart actually. So, um, that I think isn't bad to have on hand if you really feel like you want chocolate. I know sometimes I really feel like, oh my gosh, I gotta have chocolate, but I'm talking about that indulgent, overindulgent eating, um, that that's stress related and, uh, that you want to, you want to start working towards getting out of your system and being able to manage stress in different ways than turning to food or getting into a space where you don't want to do any exercise. And, you know, there's so much about, um, different lifestyles out there. Like, what can you do? What should you eat? What shouldn't you eat? But I think that this particular method of which is related to Ayurveda that I'm, I've been working on a certification for, um, through the Chopra center is just really on target with, with a lot of things, because it's a, it's kind of brings you into a space of appreciation for the world and the universe and how you're part of it and how are you interacting with it. And, it brings about a more harmonious, holistic approach when you're you're working with the rhythms of nature. And that's really addressed in this teaching of Ayurveda that I'm learning and going to be passing on. And it's interesting. Um, I found it so fascinating about how 
the the time of day and where the sun is and you know how everything is affecting what's going on within our body and their circadian rhythms and somebody also brought up there's a good resource and I I'll have to look up the name of the book but it kind of is interesting this was something that was enlightening to me that I was attending um, a meeting with some friends and we were talking about the moon and how how much power it has on the water of, you know, the ocean or something of that nature. And so you think about the magnitude of the way the tides are and the way the ocean is. Well, how is that affecting the water since we're made up of mostly water? How is it affecting the water within us? And it does. And there's a book that you can get on Amazon that actually tells you like, when is it best to cut your hair because it's, you know, the way the, the rhythm of the circadian rhythm is going? Or when um, is it best to water your plants? Like what will be best benefit them and uh, how that is in the rhythms of nature? So there's a lot of interesting things that we don't think about. And I always like to think about that relationship of, uh, and I have an actual meditation on it where it's a cleansing meditation where we're actually in in relationship with everything that is vegetation around us on the planet all the time. We're always uh, breathing in the, the carbon dioxide in every breath and we're recirculating, sending out um, oxygen, excuse me, we're breathing in oxygen and recirculating out carbon dioxide or if we had it the, the way of carbon dioxide going in, we wouldn't be here talking right now. But uh, the relationship with vegetation, plants, trees, it's all about that. Like every day we're breathing so many breaths and uh, I think it's 21,600 breaths per day is what's on average. That's what I had learned in this class. And I think that's really interesting if you're breathing 21,000 times per 21,600 times per day, you're actually like very much in relationship with these plants and vegetation that, um, you know, surrounds us. That's on a daily basis. You're inhaling the gift from them and we're exhaling out the gift to the plants and vegetation. It's a wonderful relationship. And I love to look at that and uh, really, you know, focus in on that, especially when I'm meditating. I, I really enjoy thinking about that relationship and how grateful I am. And when I'm in that state of gratitude, it's like, okay, well, you know, isn't it amazing? Life is so amazing. And to visually be focused on a beautiful plant or, you know, flower or something that you know is enjoying and living because of you sitting next to it breathing. So it's just kind of amazing the relationship that we have with our outer world. And when you come into harmony with those thoughts and you 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 have that type of thinking and you um, are in that state of gratitude, it's hard to really get upset. <laughs> it's it's still easy. It's still at times easy to get upset, but it, it's hard to maintain it when you can just see the abundance of life that's around you that you're in relationship with and what the reality is of of how we are living. And, you know, then there's some different breathing uh, styles that you can do that will help you activate the uh, different nerves in your body to help get your nervous system calmed down. So the pranayama breathing practices are very powerful. There's different styles and, you know, it takes a little practice with a couple of them and it takes a little guidance. But, you know, once you learn these things, it's easy to just implement and get it going for yourself and uh, start this practice every time you feel like you're getting overstressed, overwhelmed, you can just start this breathing practice. And there's, like I said, different styles. So whatever resonates with you with the pranayama breathing can really be powerful. And you can also add to that different essential oils that activate different parts of the brain. So say you're very um, stressed, have a lot of anxiety, and you're feeling like you're depleted, well, orange essential oil is a great oil to use. And you're always wanting to make sure that you're getting the best quality, especially if you're looking to have a very naturalistic approach, which I find the doTERRA brand is really a great brand to work with. Um, I 
you know, I'm not a big network marketer. I know that there's network marketing behind it. And if you wanted to join in and, and uh, become a, um, you know, a do- doTERRA, uh, so you can get the wholesale price, that's fine. But if you just wanted to um, get in touch with me to actually just get a bottle like one and try it, you can do that as well. And you can still you can still use those same contacts. Five zero eight nine three eight nine two one one is the best way to reach the Mind Health Coach, and uh, also visiting the website mindhealthcoach.com, and you can put in a contact request about if you wanted to even have a doTERRA consult about different aspects that you're looking for. We have blends that are amazing for different aspects, things that can cheer people up bring you forgiveness. There's blends that are crafted that are really great. So we're going to take another quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about more methods for stress management and overall well-being. We'll be right back. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com. Com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. We're coming to you live tonight and every Monday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio with the Mind Health Coach Program. I am your host, Leah Marie, and tonight we are discussing how to manage stress along with, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sharing my whole plans on the future program I've got um, of, of coursework. It's an eight-week course on meditation and other practices for weight loss loss. And so if you're interested in learning more about that, you can email me at info at mindhealthcoach.com or you can go on the website mindhealthcoach.com or give us a call 508-938-9211. And uh, before we went to break, I was talking about the oils, the essential oils, adding that in to your lifestyle, uh, having oils on hand, essential oils. Um, so if you're finding that you're, ha- you're struggling with different things that um, the breathing alone isn't helping, the deep breathing and the, the pranayama breathing techniques that you can learn through joining in on the coursework um, is, ju- is just not enough. There are other things to add on to your toolbox. There's things such as the essential oils. And I mentioned orange essential oil is very powerful. It's very inexpensive. And it's um, great for anxiety. Uh, it can be quite rejuvenating and inspiring. And it just helps uplift you. And I actually uh, have seen wonderful things happen with orange essential oil. I was actually teaching um, at a support group for people with dementia at one point several years ago. And one of the participants um, had mid-stage dementia and he was experiencing, uh, like he, he lost his ability to speak. And he was actually a college professor that 
you know, his whole life in his career had been focused on sharing information with others. So it was kind of um, very difficult to have him in a space where he wasn't able to really speak any longer and communicate effectively. And he would get very agitated and bang his fists and that sort of thing. So I had done something and I'm not saying it's going to happen every time, but I had passed around cotton balls with orange essential oil dabbed onto it. And as long as you're not allergic to oranges, you would, this is totally natural. It's extracted from orange peels. So it wouldn't be harmful to you if you were not allergic to had a food allergy with oranges. And so this gentleman was um, sitting there. And at the time I didn't realize that he had this issue. I was told after the fact, Um, but he was sitting there and he started talking after he was inhaling. I instructed everybody to start, you know, inhaling the oil uh, scent on the cotton ball and he started talking about orange groves in Florida and then he was speaking about um, wineries that his parents owned in Italy and how he used to go there and you know people were kind of looking a little surprised and there was a woman that was kind of emotional in the room and um, afterwards after that wonderful sharing and all of that and I completed the whole session the facilitator of the group came up to me and she said to me that that gentleman actually had lost the ability to speak. He hasn't spoken in a while. And that's the first lucid moment he had in a long time. And I was really impressed with the power of the orange essential oil to be able to do that for him. And the facilitator actually had said to me, what is in that orange essential oil? You know, like wondering what I had brought in there, but it was just orange essential oil extracted from orange peels. And that was just a really wonderful moment. And the person, the woman that was in the room showing emotion was actually his wife. And it was a very special moment for her to hear him speaking, speaking totally lucid. So I'm not saying like I... I stated in the beginning of this story um, that this will happen on every occasion with somebody with dementia. However, uh, you know, there is scientific evidence that our neurotransmitters um, can be connected. Like, you know, it can, it can wake up the connections and inspire different things to be in touch that maybe aren't normally being like, uh, circulated so that this kind of thing can occur occur with somebody with dementia, or it might even occur with you. Like, say you smell something, um, that's cinnamon or that can inspire nostalgic memories. So you might remember something that you had totally forgotten about, like maybe being in the kitchen with grandma. I don't know. I I think that smelling something with cinnamon always reminds my, me working with my mother to make tapioca pudding or rice pudding. It was something that she liked to make in the winter time. And I can remember the old crock pot that we had. And it just is really a nice, warm family memory for me. Um, so whenever I smell cinnamon, I kind of tap into memories of that and Thanksgiving and Christmas. And it's just really a lot about family. So I love meditating with cinnamon and, and remembering those beautiful times that I had with my family. So essential oils can bring about experiences that we can you know, remember and uh, re-experience in positive ways. So it's it's wonderful to do that at times, um, to kind of process different things that we experienced as younger people. And, uh, you know, I've done meditation along with different essential oils as well as the deep breathing. And it brings you into a state of gratitude for having these memories inspired by different essential oils um, that you can bring in and play with. You can, you can kind of have goals for your meditation and you can bring in these different essential oils to help inspire more to come out of the meditation, which I think is really fabulous. So if you're looking to lower anxiety, you could be meditating and, uh, you know, having um, a moment of putting some orange essential oil in the palms of your hand and inhaling deeply and enjoying the orange and see what comes, you know, what comes to you, what, what different, uh, things are inspired within. And then, you know, if you're feeling different hunger or, um, 
hunger cravings for um, unhealthy things. If you're working with inspiring your brain with uh, healthy things such as essential oils as orange and, you know, some of the other rejuvenating, energizing oils, uh, lime is really great, lemon, the, the citrus ones, this can get you into a different frame of of uh, your brain, like thinking that, okay, you know what, when I have those cravings for um, some cookies and I feel like eating a whole bag of cookies because I'm stressed, I'm just going to go over here, grab my oil, go into some deep breathing and meditate on some moments that I can uh, feel inspired and rejuvenated with these essential oils that bring about rejuvenation and uh, lowering anxiety and uh, things that are connected to unhealthy practices, unhealth, unhealthy ha- habits that you're, you're reaching for. And so it's a good, it's a good healthy way to replace those, those different things that you're trying to avoid. So we're about to take another quick break. And when we come back, we'll be talking a little bit more about stress management. We'll be right back. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. We are back on the Mind Health Coach program with Leah Marie on BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. Tonight, we're discussing stress management in honor of uh, April's Stress Awareness Month. And also, you know, I'm sharing some different events that are coming up, such as the eight-week program to meditation and other practices that healthy practices that will help with weight loss. And, um, you know, when when we're going into these other practices such as essential oil and deep breathing and meditation, sometimes there's things that are irking us, like different um, emotions that we're feeling or, you know, and that's normal. I want everybody to understand and I'll be incorporating into the classes that I'm holding um, this this teaching of there's like 21 different states of meditation and they do include things like frustration and um you know that's very very normal frustration being angry being upset a little bit um that's that's different emotions that's kind of built into our cells and we need to release that showing us that we have some work to do we have to resolve some of the stuff that's hidden within and that's what going within is all about so there's a very normal process to that. And a lot of people experience these emotions. I know when I've taught so many classes that are people that, you know, back 10 or so years ago, people were just kind of being introduced to the concept of meditation as part of their daily routine for overall well-being. And, you know, I was a big promoter of this. I was explaining the benefits to your brain health and overall well-being. You know, it can help with blood pressure. It can help 
you not activate certain genes that will uh, bring on disease processes such as autoimmune disorders and heart disease. So meditation in itself is, it's basically just going into a different brainwave state. And a lot of people don't understand that. Like our brain has to go through a certain cycle throughout a 24 hour period. And if it doesn't achieve certain cycles for a length of time, like sleep, we need sleep, right? I I don't know many people that do not need sleep. I have some patients that we care for in the company. I'm uh, the chief operating officer of and, uh, you know, I see some folks come on board that are really struggling to sleep. And, uh, you know, that's usually related to something along the lines of dementia. And it's not a healthy thing. It's not healthy for their overall well being. And it's not healthy for their brains. It's activating the disease process to progress further and quicker. So it's important that we all consider sleep. I know that in America, and especially with our younger population, it seems like a trend to for less sleep. And, you know, it's kind of been part of the cultural perception that if you're a college student, you should sleep less. And I'm trying to um, share with with that population through my children that are college age that, you know, really, it's critical that you get your rest because your brain is going through a cycle. And if you don't have all of those parameters met that we need in the 24 hour period, then you're not going to be healthy. It's going to, it's going to start activating. That's why we have problems with, you know, Alzheimer's being the sixth leading cause of death in America. It's important that we honor our bodies and take care of them the best we can. And sleep is a part of it as well as being in a state of meditation, which, as I was mentioning, a lot of people uh, have this misconception that, oh, I can't do that. Well, we're all capable of being in what's called the alpha brainwave state. And that's what the state of meditation is. It's the alpha brainwave state. And when we're in the alpha brainwave state, I kind of joke around and I say, it's like when you were a kid and you were um, sitting in class and you were imagining yourself out building snowmen and, you know, or you're, you're in the lab last week of uh, school and it's so hot in the school and you're dying to get to the beach and you're just sitting there daydreaming. You know, these are these are the kind of feelings that you would have when you're in alpha brainwave state. You're not really listening to anybody. You're just in, internally watching your own movie that your mind is making. And, you know, it's it is also important to have the the most productive meditation to focus on something that isn't going to stress you out, that's going to bring you joy and gratitude. Um, And sometimes just being in the state of uh, enjoying your own breath and experiencing everything on a very, um, you know, tactical level within yourself and around yourself, just experiencing the air surrounding you and your body and just feeling yourself relax, experiencing the air coming into your lungs through your nose and just being joyful that you're you're having this beautiful experience of life and just getting into that space. Sometimes that can be so hard and it can be frustrating. And that's what I was saying about the different stages of meditation and people can get really agitated and, and angry and feel like they can't meditate. And that's okay. And it's a matter of still going back to try because we need to have at least a half hour every day of alpha brainwave state and being in the state of what we call meditation in order for our optimal well-being. So it's an important practice to incorporate into your life, but it also can bring so many gifts. Um, I know that there's a lot of people out there that are extremely successful that attribute their success to a daily meditation practice. You look at Oprah Winfrey or um, Steve Jobs and, you know, all of these very highly successful people contribute the daily meditation practice to actually being the, the one part of the day that they were able to get so creative. So when people think, oh, I can't just sit there and do nothing, it's actually an extremely creative time for you and you're you're actually developing so many different um things to happen within your body and within your brain and to feed your spirit. So it's, it's interesting that 
people feel that it's a waste of time. It's time that society realizes that it's so critical for our survival um, and optimally our evolution to evolve in the most productive ways and to create our own legacies. You know, I'm talking about people that are creating unbelievable legacies and they contribute it to meditation. You know, I, I have just recently um, listened to a couple of the meditations from the program that Deepak and Oprah are doing. And she's so beautiful. I mean, she's an amazing woman um, and so deep in the process. And it's, it's just a wonderful experience just to hear her talk and just tuning into these different uh, teachers that are available to you, um, you know, that are that's free and then working more individualized on a coaching program for more specific topics is great, too. So we are going to take another quick break and we'll be wrapping up the show in the, the last segment here. So stay tuned. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe Tashandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Thanks so much for listening tonight, everyone, to the Mind Health Coach Program with Leah Marie. I'm your host, and we don't have much time left. I just want to reiterate a few things that I've been speaking about tonight. And also, I want to share, too, one of... um, one of the different learning, um, the, one of the different modalities I just learned about is scalar light. And I was so intrigued by this. Um, I'm actually being treated right now. And it's like, you don't even have to do anything. But I um, interviewed a gentleman on another show that I'm on. Uh, his name is Tom Palladino. And he has a website called scalarlight.com. S C A L A R light L I G H T dot com. And he's offering free healings. Um, and what it is, is a technology that he has identified um, this light source that is very powerful. And it also includes the, uh, the different me- organisms that are making different people sick like myself I have uh, the the organisms in my body that are related to Lyme so I'm being treated I don't have to do anything he's just programmed it with uh, you know whatever he needed to do and I'm telling you I I'm I was a little skeptical at first but I am feeling so much better it's been uh, happening for about a week and um, I'm feeling a lot better like I don't have the aches and pains that I typically do and I feel a lot more energized so I'm excited about this and Tom asked that you know if I had any listeners that were interested in this just to go to the website and there's a link you can click 
click on there to sign up for this um, free treatment. So uh, it's really intriguing to me. And it makes sense uh, when you, you can learn some more on there and there's some YouTube videos and that sort of thing. But I think Tom's method is is pretty powerful and it, it could be the future of medicine in a lot of different disease processes. So that's something to take a look at. But also, to do some reprogramming on yourself, I want you all to consider uh, the work that I'm doing, which is um, I'm going to be doing weight loss and um, working on a healthier lifestyle uh, protocol. And that's going to be an eight week program coming up in uh, June. I think that's when it's either going to be starting at the end of May or beginning of June. But I'm really excited about this. If you are wanting to sign up, then please uh, give us a call at 508-938-9211. Visit our website at mindhealthcoach.com and fill out the contact page or email us at info at mindhealthcoach.com. And I I'm telling you, I, I'm really excited about this because it's not only going to connect you to different methods to improve your health and reprogram your brain with meditation, but we're also going to be joining in, you know, a group setting where you can meet others and, uh, you know, really encourage each other. I'm not saying it's like, uh, you know, some sort of program like Weight Watchers or anything like that. It's more about um, really choosing a healthier path for yourself, for this vessel you're in, and for your overall well-being, body, mind, spirit. Uh, you know, I think it's important that we honor where we are, where we're at, and, you know, release those things that no longer serve us. And if you're choosing those healthier um, ways to providing the vessel that you're in, uh, a better way to maneuver and, and get through this this process that we call life, you know, what better way than to meet others and, and uh collect others thoughts and and hear out what the teachings will be and and see what works best for you there's going to be lots of fun creative ways to help you um work on your your overall health well-being and weight loss so i'm looking forward to that i really am and i really hope that a lot of people reach out to me soon because i'd like to kind of formulate like i said some different groups that meet um you know if there's going to be a lot of folks that are in different age brackets i'd like to kind of separate them and, and so that there can be a more more of a focus on each uh, each of those individual demographics needs. Uh, and, you know, I'm really excited as well about the trip to Bermuda in September. It's the dates are September 1st through, through the 8th. And this is going to be a wonderful experience. If you know anybody that's struggling with Alzheimer's, or other types of dementia, um, or if you know a family that is having this issue, please let them know to visit mindhealthcoach.com and learn more about our beautiful trip to Bermuda. Thanks so much. I am so glad to be on this show tonight, and I welcome any input that you might have. Have a great night from Leah Marie. You've been listening to the Mind Health Coach with your host, Leah Marie. Tune in each week so you can experience contentment and a feeling of well-being on all levels of existence, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual on the Mind Health Coach Show with your host, Leah Marie. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.